Amazing week for all Vue developers out there. Vue 3.6 Alpha is finally out. And today's video, we will take a look at what's new in this release. And the biggest one is the Vapor Mode, a compilation strategy that improves the performance of your apps. Today, I'll show you in this video how to use this feature, and then I will show you the benchmarks of how fast this is. But before we dive in, make sure you subscribe to BetterStack for more Vue-related videos. Now looking at the release, there's only one big feature, a performance improvement, and a couple of bug fixes for CSS vars, reactivity, and scheduler. And yes, the biggest feature that is finally released is the vapor mode. Vue has been working on this for quite some time. In fact, it was introduced back in January of 2023, where the main intention for this strategy is to improve the performance of applications and to make them more lightweight. But the question is, how? The answer is by not using VDOM because the main issue with VDOM is it would still have to go through the DOM trees and check every virtual node for differences. And the size difference between VDOM and no VDOM is actually massive. The baseline size of VDOM is usually around 50 kilobytes. And without VDOM, your app baseline size could go down to six kilobytes. And that is 88% less. Now the main question is, how do we actually use this in our apps? Before the idea was to use the extension .vapor.view and I'm so glad that they didn't go this route because that'll be horrible to see in your file explorer mix, you know, mixing the vapor and non-vapor files. However, in this update, it's actually fairly simple. All we need to do is use the vapor attribute to the script setup syntax and that's it your app is now performant. Now let's understand the difference between non-vapor and vapor templates. Normally, Vue compiles your templates into a render function that builds a tree of virtual DOM nodes. When your state changes, Vue runs a diff algorithm to figure out what needs to be updated. You can see here in the compiled script that it starts with an open block to create a new section. And then it creates a new element inside of that block, like an H1 for example, with a reactive text inside. And then finally, return the virtual DOM tree. Whereas with Vapor, there is no open block, there is no create element vnode function. Instead, Vue compiles your template into predefined DOM templates using the template function, as you can see here. And actually, this can be reused at runtime. After that, it creates a real DOM node at runtime, grabs references to the exact text nodes, for example, the X0, X1, etc., and then binds reactive values directly to those DOM elements using the render effect and set text. So yes, every time the states change, Vue runs the set text function on the associated DOM directly. It's basically like assigning a value to a variable directly instead of going through the virtual DOM diff. Now the biggest question is how fast is Vapor compared to non-Vapor and frameworks like Svelte, for example. Right now we still don't have an updated benchmark, but we can clearly see that there is a difference between Vue Vapor and just Vue. See here that with Vue, the weighted geometric mean is 1%. 0.26, whereas with Vue Vapor, it's 1.11, which is very close to Svelte. And this is just the version 3.5.13. We can already imagine how much progress has been made in 3.6. So while the numbers aren't final yet, one thing is clear. Vapor mode is closing the performance gap fast. See what I did there? Fast. Now, if you want to try this locally, you'll need to force Vue 3.6 to be compatible with your existing dependencies. Because like I said, it's still in alpha and not all tools officially support it yet. So for example, when installing, you'll need to use the legacy peer depths flag with npm to bypass the peer dependency conflicts. And once you have that installed, you will have to use the vapor interrupt plugin in your app. This will allow you to mix vapor and vdom. This is great, especially if you're working with UI frameworks like Vutify or something similar. And if you want to create an app with Vapor, all you need to do is use the Create Vapor app. Then finally, you can start using Vapor attribute in your single file components. And once your app is compiled, you can find your components in the browser and see that it is now using Vapor. So that is the upcoming Vue 3.6 with Vapor. How do you guys feel about this upcoming update? Are you excited? Are you looking forward to use this in your application? Let us know in the comments below. And if you want to see more Vue related videos like this one, subscribe to Better Stack to not miss our future uploads. Thank you for watching. My name is Bernard, and I will see you in the next one.